Deadman's PLC, DM PLC. You can just imagine the movie trailer. Your worst enemy has taken over all your flights and you cannot remove them from your network. They demand a $1 billion ransom or they will bring down every flight. Bob accidentally removes one of the controllers. You now have only 25 minutes to save the lives of those in the air. We've all seen these movies with a dead man switch and where an elaborate mechanism is created for someone to be killed if a ransom is not paid. But anyone who tampers with the mechanism will cause the dead man switch to activate and kill the target. Now this approach is coming to attacks on CNI, critical national infrastructure and ICS, industrial control systems. We have generally been fortunate that PLCs or programmable logic, logic control systems have been largely untouched by cyber attacks, but there is no reason not to focus this on our security. Significant risks exist, especially for attacks against CNI, as highlighted with Stuxnet. In a new paper, Richard Derbyshire and a team and a research team at Orange Defence and at Lancaster University focus on the scenario where an entire environment is controlled by an adversary and where all the assets pull each other to make sure they remain untampered. Any changes to the configuration or a removal of one of the controllers will cause the system to go into full on and is similar to a dead man switch. The paper outlines the increase in cyber extortion, CyX targets, and where a key focus now is typically to both encrypt the target's data and also exfiltrate it. In most cases, this type of approach can be defended against in a PLC environment by replacing the existing hardware or resetting the configuration of devices, which is equivalent to the restore from a backup. DMPLC showcases a methodology which will overcome these recovery methods. Crash Override and Titan. In 2016, the Crash Override malware was installed on the Ukrainian critical infrastructure and which resulted in a cyber attack on the power supply network. It happened on the electrical transmission station near the city of Kiev in December 2016 and resulted in a blackout of around 20% of the Ukrainian population. Luckily, it only lasted for one hour, but many think that it was just a test, a dry run for a more sustained attack. <clears throat> this attack has now been traced to the crash override or industrial malware. A previous attack on the Ukrainian power infrastructure in 2015 involved a manual switch off to, of power to power substations but the newly discovered malware learned the topology of the supply network by communicating with control equipment within the substations and automatically shutting down systems. <clears throat> the company who analysed it, Dragos, thinks it could have been part of, could bring down parts of the energy network, but not the whole of it, and that the activation date of the malware was the 17th of December 20. 16. They also defined that the malware can be, defected, could, can be detected by looking for abnormal network traffic, such as for substation, such as looking for substation locations and probing for electrical switch breakers. Many su suspect it may have been sent through phishing emails, as with the 2015 attack, and where crash override infected Microsoft Windows machines within the target network and then mapped out control systems in order to locate the key supply points along with recording network activity which could be sent back to the controllers of the malware. After the discovery phase, it was thought that crash override can load up one of four additional modules and which can then communicate with the different types of equipment such as for Honeywell and Siemens controllers. This could allow it to target other electrical supplies within different countries. In 2018 too, it was reported that the Triton malware brought down safety systems for the oil and gas network in the Middle East. 
This was activated by, achieved by a reverse engineering of the firmware used by device controllers and focused itself on specific parts of the infrastructure. A typical attack often involved disabling safety systems and which protect the infrastructure on a system overload. When an overload does occur, the safety system does not protect the equipment and this can lead to severe physical damage of the infrastructure. A tripping of just one part of the safety system too can cause a chain reaction and bring down the whole of the infrastructure. DMPLC. With DMPLC, all of the PLCs and engineering workstations EWs constantly poll each other and detect any deviations from the required attack behaviour and thus disallow any changes to the overall running of the adversary's objectives. If the system is tampered with, it activates a dead man switch and where the PLCs set their outputs to ON. This could have devastating effects on a physical infrastructure that the PLCs connect to. This, the research team say, moves away from the traditional ransomware approach of encrypting data within the infrastructure to one which allows the system to continue but under the adversary's control. I've included a figure of the basic setup, but the basic objectives of the team were deploy with a minimum prerequisites from the EW, run in parallel to existing operational code, does not impact existing operation code, is resilient to tampering response and recovery processes, includes tamper de detection, can enact undesirable widespread operational impact, requires a key to the relinqu relinquish control back to the system op owners, and can be tested prior to it being armed. The main focus of the work is to define a framework for the DMPLC and then define mitigation techniques. In order to keep the deadlock, the devices then monitor each other for changes and where alerts are raised for any perceived changes. Overall, the team successfully tested three main operations, a PLC being removed from the network, the DMPLC ransom timer expiring, the victim entering a code having paid their ransom. In this scenario, three PLCs were used and the figure I've included shows the response to PLC3 being removed from the network and where PLC1 and PLC2 sent their, set their outputs to ON after 25 seconds, which causes the dead man switch to activate. Thus, someone taking PLC3 off the network has 12 to 25 seconds before the whole of the network goes into full on mode. Conclusions Dead Man PLC sounds like a script from a movie, but it is a movie that could play for real. Our CNI is precious and we need to protect it. Otherwise, here's another movie. Your worst enemy has taken over all the fun rides at a fair and you cannot remove them from your network. They demand a $1 billion ransom or the rides will all stop instantly. Bob accidentally removes one of the controllers. You now have 25 minutes to save their lives. Thank you.